In this video we're going to see how we can migrate the tests that we wrote in the Django maintenance mode middleware video and we're going to migrate the test functionality from the Django test case to the PyTest framework. Now PyTest is a preferred package for testing by many in the Python and Django communities and there were a few requests for this in the previous video so let's do a short video on how to migrate those tests to PyTest. And in doing this we're going to see how we can directly map from concepts in the Django test utilities to the PyTest framework. Now if you're enjoying this content give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more and let's dive in. Now to start with we're going to have a quick look at the PyTest documentation. What PyTest does is it makes it easy to write small readable tests and it can scale to support complex functional testing for applications and libraries. And PyTest will use the built-in assert keyword in Python. So unlike the Python unit test module and Django's test case class, we don't need to memorize function names like self.assert equals or assert true or assert contains and so on. Instead, we have simple assertions in our functions and the logic for that is on the right hand side of that statement. Now we're going to need to install PyTest and we're also going to install a plugin called PyTest Django. And this plugin provides a set of useful tools for testing Django apps and projects. Now I'm going to copy this pip install command here and let's open VS Code where I have a Python virtual environment activated. We're going to paste the command in there and of course we also need to install PyTest. So let's run this command. Now that's going to install PyTest and PyTest Django into this environment. And now that that's installed, what we're going to do is write two functions in PyTest. And we're going to create tests that mimic the functionality that we defined in the last video for the maintenance mode middleware. So one function to test the behavior when maintenance mode is on and another function to test the behavior when it's off. And in doing this, we're going to see how to map some of this functionality, such as the override settings decorator from the Django test framework to the PyTest framework. Now to keep things simple, what I'm going to do in the core application where we already have a tests.py file is create a new file and I'm going to call it tests2.py. Now of course in a real application you wouldn't call the file this, we could call it something like testmiddleware.py. And at the top of this file let's import pytest. And let's start by migrating the function that tests the behavior when maintenance mode is on. Now as I said we're going to see how to mimic the override settings decorator. And the reason that we're using this is that maintenance mode is currently a setting in the Django application and our tests cannot rely on whatever the setting happens to be when the tests are run. We need to have a way of overriding the setting and then we can write tests that are conditional on whatever that setting might be. So in order to do this in PyTest, let's go back to this file here. We're going to create two PyTest fixtures now. And a PyTest fixture is a function that provides a consistent context for your tests. Now the way to write a fixture is to decorate a function with pytest.fixture and then we can write the name of the function here and I'm going to call this fixture maintenance mode on. Now the question is what do we need to actually do in this function here? I'm just going to pass for now and we're going to write a similar function just below for turning maintenance mode off and we're going to use this fixture and inject it into our test functions to test that behavior. Now I'm going to go to the pytest Django documentation and there's a section here on overriding individual settings and I'll leave a link to that below the video. So PyTest Django provides a settings fixture and you can write another fixture that takes that settings fixture as a parameter in order to change the settings in your Django project for your tests. So let's do that just now and go back to VS Code. We're going to inject this settings fixture here and we're going to need to do that in both of the PyTest fixtures that we're writing here. Once we have the settings fixture, we can then set some of these settings. So for example, settings.maintenance mode, we can set that to true in this fixture. And I'm going to copy that and below we can set it to false in the other fixture. Now the idea is we can now inject these fixtures into our test functions. So let's go down below the fixtures and we're going to write some functions now. And I'm going to copy the names from the previous file that we had. So the top one here is test response when maintenance mode is on. Let's copy that. And that's going to take the maintenance mode on fixture. That's going to take that setting and set it to true. Now what we did in this function was we used the Django test client in order to send a get request to that URL. And then we were checking that the response contained this piece of text here that we defined in our middleware class. So when maintenance mode is on, we return an HTTP response with that text. And that's what this test is checking here. So let's replicate that functionality in this new function in PyTest. We're going to inject a second fixture here from the PyTest Django plugin, and that's the test client. And the test client allows you to perform these requests. So for example, we can get a response by using the client.get function, and we're going to send that request to the same URL. 
Once we have that response, I'm going to create a variable called response text. And I'm going to set that equal to this string here. And this matches what's returned from the middleware if maintenance mode is on. And in this test, we know that maintenance mode is on because we've injected that fixture here that sets the value to true. And what we can do is assert that the response contains this text, or rather that the response is equal to that text. And we just use a normal assertion in Python to do this. So we're going to assert that response.content is equal to the response text. Now response.content will return bytes, so we need to decode that to a string by using the .decode function. And after we do that, this assertion should hopefully return true. Now let's test this out. So we're going to go to the terminal and we can run the pytest command. And we can see the output here. It has not found any tests. We've got collected zero items in the output. So we need to tell pytest how to find our tests and how to run these tests. Now in order to do that, we're going to go to the project root and I'm going to create a new file here called pytest.ini. And this is a configuration file for pytest. And we can put the settings for PyTest in this block of code here. So to start with, let's set the Django settings module. And that's going to be in the project directory, which is called Django underscore underscore MW. And then within there, we have a settings.py file. So let's set that here. And in a production environment, you might have a settings file specifically for tests. So in that case, you would set the reference to that here in the Django settings module variable. What we're also going to do is we're going to tell PyTest where to find our test file. So Python files, we're going to reference that tests2.py file. And that's the one that, that we created here and that we're writing this code in. And the final thing I want to do is add some options that are always going to be applied on the command line when we run the PyTest command. So I'm going to add dash RP and the R flag here. This is going to display a test summary at the end of the test session. And that's going to be useful to get an overview of how the tests performed and how many passed and failed. So now that we've done this, let's save the pytest.ini file and we're going to go back to the command line and rerun pytest. And this time you can see that we've collected one item and that item is our test function that we've written here in tests2.py. And we can see the summary at the bottom that the test has passed. And that means that when we send a get request to this URL, the response content is equal to the string that we've set here. And this behavior is what's defined when maintenance mode is on and we're turning that on by injecting that fixture. Now, one thing to note here is that we're getting some logging output that's being captured to standard error here. Now, we can actually disable logging in PyTest for our tests if we want to, and that's what we did in the last video. If we go back here in the Django test case setup method, what we did was call the logging.disable function, and we disabled all outputs with the log level of critical or below. We're going to do that now in PyTest, and what we're going to do here is define another fixture and this fixture is going to be automatically used by all of our tests because we're going to define it with an auto use equals true parameter. So let's use pytest.fixture and we're going to pass auto use and we're going to set that to true. And I'm going to call this fixture disable logging. Now we don't need to pass anything into this fixture. It doesn't depend on any others. All we need to do at the top is import the logging module from the Python standard library. And we're going to paste that function that we had previously into this auto use fixture. So again, we're disabling logging and because we're passing auto use equals true, that means that by default, every single test function that we write is going to use that fixture and therefore it's going to turn off logging. So if we go to the bottom here and we rerun this, you can see the output now we have our test passing, but we don't get those log messages that are defined in the middleware class. So we've disabled logging and we can now move on to the second function. So we're testing the response when maintenance mode is on. What I'm going to do is copy the two lines of code here and we're going to go below and I'm going to paste these in and we're going to change the name of the function to test response when maintenance mode is off. And we also need to change the fixture that we're injecting into this test. So we're going to change that to maintenance mode off and that's this one here that sets that setting to false. So let's go back to our function. We're sending the request to that endpoint and we get back the response. If you look at the previous test that we defined for when maintenance mode is off, we were using the Django test case assert contains method and we were checking that the response contained this text here. Now the reason for that is that when maintenance mode is off, we expect to get served this template here. And that's because this is the template that matches this particular URL. So the Django view will return the template when a request comes in for this particular URL. Unless maintenance mode is on, of course, when a different response will be sent, 
but we've already written that test, so we're now going to write the test that checks for this text here. So let's go back to tests2.py, and again we're going to define response text here, and we're going to set that equal to what we had in the previous video, so let's copy this text and go back here and paste that in. And we're now going to use another assertion here, we're going to check that the response text is in response.content.decode. So again, we use decode to convert the bytes to a string, and then we use the assertion here that the response text is in that string, so we expect the template that's returned to contain that text here. And the other thing we did in the previous video was we used the test cases method assert template used. So how do we get access to that in PyTest? What we can do is go back to the PyTest Django plugin. So let's open the documentation for that. And this is a page on Django helpers. And as it says here, all of the Django test case assertions are available in the PyTest Django.asserts module. And it turns out this is exactly what we need. So let's copy that and go back to VS Code. And we're going to go to the top of the file and we're going to bring that import in. So we're importing assert template used. And we can now go back down to our function and we can use assert template used here. And we can pass in the name of the template that we expect to get back. And in this case, that's index.html. So that's an example of how you can use an assertion in the Django test case within your PyTest functions. Let's save this file and go back to the terminal and we're going to run PyTest and hopefully we're going to see that two tests were collected and both of them passed and that's exactly what we see here. So that's been a short video where we've shown how to take Django tests and write the same tests in PyTest. What we've shown in this video is how to define some fixtures that can be used within your PyTest functions. So for example, we have two fixtures here that take the PyTest Django settings fixture and that allows us to change the values of our settings in order to test the behavior of those settings. And we also saw how to define a fixture here that's used automatically by all of our test functions by passing auto use equals true into that decorator. And as well as the built-in settings fixture in PyTest Django, we also saw how to use the client in order to send the requests to the application. And then we saw how to use normal assertions in Python in order to check that the results contained the state or the content that we expected. And then finally, we also saw how we can use Django test case methods, such as assert template used in the context of a PyTest function. So in order to do that, all we need to do is we need to import the assertion that we want from the PyTest Django.asserts module. So this is all demonstrating the PyTest way of mimicking some of the Django test functionality. And hopefully that will help you going forward if you weren't aware of some of this or if you haven't used PyTest before. So that's all for this video. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And if you're enjoying this content, consider buying the channel a coffee. There's a link in the description. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.